Hop in here with me. Let's go down to beautiful Lake Tawakany. It's about an hour east of Dallas, Tawakany is. Wind Point Park. Coolest place to be today, right out that water. Over in highly intelligent here. We just dumped some Vineyard Max and that dough went she beeline. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We're so glad you tuned in to join us for another exciting real world outdoor adventure right here on A Sportsman's Life. Well, howdy friends, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton. Let's go fishing. Hop in here with me. Let's go down to beautiful Lake Tawakany. It's about an hour east of Dallas, Tawakany is. Wind Point Park. Mr. Ryan Fergus is the manager there. We're going to drive down and meet Ryan. He's going to give us a tour. Jeff Rice, of course, will be with us. Larry Wysoon is going to be down there. It's kind of hot. It's summertime right now. It's supposed to be 104 today, but we're going to wait till late this afternoon. I've already got some fajitas lined up, already made, wrapped in foil, so we're going to have fajitas and baked beans tonight at one of the cabins there. And our goal is to film some deer. There's lots and lots of deer at Wind Point Park. I'd like to give you the website up front so you can check this place out. Uh, WindPointParkTX.com is the website. Tawakany is an absolutely awesome catfish lake, a premier catfish lake. So our goal is to get down there and film the park, show you guys some of the amenities down there. It's an awesome, about 180 acre park, lots of wild deer. There are no high fences, but lots of deer. We're going to try to film some deer and show you the things there at the park. We're going to spend the night, enjoy some of these, what I hope to be really good fajitas and my old skillet baked beans. Uh, Mr. Fergus is going to give us a tour. Show Jeff and Larry have never been down there, so it'll be a first for them. But it's one of my favorite places. Some awesome fishing off the bank and also a big old long pier. Then in the morning, we're going to join my longtime friend, catfish guide David Hanson. Now, David has been guiding for catfish down at Lake Tawakany longer than anybody that I know. Awesome guy and an awesome catfish guide. So, Kind of the news right now is he's catching blue catfish numbers and some big ones too uh, in the summertime. This is mid-August when we're filming this. So hopefully in the morning we're going we're gonna to make this a two-part show. This week we're going to show you the, the park, Wind Point Park, show you all the amenities and everything. And then next week uh, the plan is to give you a in-the-boat seat uh, ride with us on this catfishing trip. So... Let's take the little drive. It's going to take us about 40 minutes to get down there, and hopefully Jeff and, and uh, Larry will be there. I know Ryan's going to meet us at the park office, so here we go. Folks, we made it out to the beautiful park. Mr. Ryan is the official operator, Ryan Fergus. And uh, there you, here's Mr. Y soon coming in. You didn't get some, did you get some sand in those? I was back there playing in the sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a sandbox uh, right here though, isn't that? It's Look a beautiful that. beach. It is a beautiful beach. Really, yeah, it is. You got a little platform, diving platform out there, Ryan. But Ryan, you've been, the operator here for like 10 years, right? That's right. It's about 180 acres? 180 acres. The park's been around for over 50 years and there was just an opportunity for us to come in and kind of make some changes to it. Kind of an interesting thing is 30 years ago, I've, I've told you about this, I came out with another buddy fishing and this park is a natural point. You know, it goes out into the, into the lake and the catfishing was good back then, but it was, I never dreamed it would be turned into something like this. I mean, this is pristine. What do you say we, uh, you show us some of the other amenities around here, some of the cabins, and yeah. especially that long fishing pier. Take a look at that. Yeah, we can go for a ride and show you around. Okay. So.
hottest day in August and it's the middle of the week and normally right now we are every one of these spaces would be filled so right now kids are getting ready to go to school school just started any other time if you don't have kids at school this would be an ideal time to come to this lake the fishing is good the temperature is starting to drop here for too very long and as you can see there are finally some spaces available try to do this during the summertime you had better get ahead of everybody and call in your reservations long before you decide to come here Looks like they're eating on a lily pad. They're eating on something in there, aren't they? Yeah. Coolest place to be today, right out in that water. Those are highly intelligent deer. Yes, they are. Yeah, that, that doe's got a lily pad in her mouth. Does she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Oh, yeah, they are. They're eating right on that lily pad. Amazing. They know where to be when it's 104 degrees in Texas. Brought to you by Dallas Safari Club, conservation, education, and hunter advocacy. Hornaday, accurate, deadly, dependable. Taurus Firearms, maker of the Raging Hunter. Stealth Vision, high-tech precision driven equipment tailored for the modern hunter. We just dumped some Vineyard Max and that dough went she beeline. She can smell it. Beeline. Look at that. That's crazy. That wind was blowing from this way to there? Yep. There she is. She's on it right now. She's she got it. downwind and moved right well, onto that she vineyard. She is back. on it. <laughs> One of the great things about that is, is what we found is it attracts deer and even in areas where they have no idea what a grapevine or a grape is. I put it out where the closest grape outside in somebody's house or in a bottle of wine was 50 miles away and they came to it. It's just absolutely amazing to me because so very often with white-tailed deer in particular they're so very finicky and if you introduce a different odor to them or a different aroma even they a lot of times shy of that area and yet for some reason they're amazingly attracted to it. Larry that deer got downwind probably a oh, couple of hundred yards, a yeah. couple of hundred feet and and I was watching her picked up the scent of those grapes. <laughs> you can see her. Oh, she, she went. She came by me. Yeah. And went there. straight to it. Yes. I mean, straight to it. Yep. You're talking about deer that, that did, didn't have an idea of what a grape was. At your police out in uh, Sterling City. We were out there. Yeah, and exactly. and with, without that, we could have killed bucks. But the bucks had dominated those. Oh, look at them. Look at them. Oh, more of them smell they, it. Again, they came right in downrange. I mean, downwind. Yep. The wind's blowing, yep. blowing directly yep. from that dough by the water to us. Yep. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Now. I mean, it's from everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Yep. And come get away from my Vineyard Max. <laughs> Don't you get, no, get away from there now. I told you, get away now. Look at Vineyard Max fights here. <laughs> Vineyard Max wars. <laughs> Look at it's this. Funny. This is That's fun. the key. They, they can smell it. Yep, they sure can. Corn, they'll, they will eventually find the corn, but I know they can't smell that corn as far as... Well, true, the other side of all this is one of the things that always interests me about it is the fact that it's really good for deer because so many places there's a little bit of corn in there, but for the most part it is high energy because of the, the sucrose level in those grape skins. And then you've got a great amount of oils and a bunch of other things in the rice bran and that combination is really good for deer to be very open about it in terms of energy in a lot of places we have enough vegetation where that's very high and 
in protein, but research that we've done over the years, we found that energy is every bit as pro important as protein is as far as the health of the deer herd is concerned. Amazing. That is amazing. They're still coming. They're coming we, in a run, which is amazing. Look at this. Yeah, they're unloading. We had that small group. That we're doe is still dominating that vineyard, Max, isn't she? The only thing we haven't seen is one try to swim across the lake yet. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either. <laughs> That's crazy. Look at that. Wow. Did I dumped you? a half a bag of Vineyard Max on the shoreline. We backed off here a ways and once they caught wind, it's all over. Oh, look at her. Look at, look at her stand up. I mean, she's saying, this is mine. It shows the dominance or the hierarchy that you have in deer. Yep. There's always one older doe or one more aggressive doe. She may not be the biggest one, but she's got the attitude and she's gonna keep everything away from what she considers to be hers. After the success we had with Vineyard Max over at the lake, we decided to move inland just a little bit, put some out back behind a cabin, not too far from a state park where a deer had never before been exposed to Vineyard Max. And guess what? Almost immediately, here they came and as you can see, they were even trying to get into the bag. They had some out on the ground where bucks and does came in, but these two does were almost getting ready to fight over who was going to be able to get in the bag. It was almost comical, and we really messed up because we probably should have made the hole in the bag a whole lot bigger. And as you're about to see, she starts pawing as well, too, trying to get into this bag here in just a little bit. It's amazing how this product works and how quickly deer take to it. I've played around with it now several different places, and I continually am amazed, totally amazed as how well they respond and how quickly they do come in. If you want to learn more about Vineyard Max and the other products I have, go to www.vineyardmax.net. A Sportsman's Life is also brought to you by Mossberg, American Built, American Strong. The Wyo Steakhouse. Catch and Release Apparel, AGM Global Vision, your go-to for thermal hunting scopes and spotters, Pyramid Air, your one-stop shop for everything air guns. Good morning, sports fans. This is your fishing tip on a sportsman's life. Today we're going to talk about slabs. A slab is a lead spoon. I am asked constantly. It is exactly what we say. We fish this bait vertically. This right here is a two ounce bait. This is, we fish in deep water for these strikers. Now, the way we apply these things is we either drop them, rip them up, or we bump them on the bottom. That's real popular on the flats. I got something cool right here. Chris made this for me and it's 50 years of slabs. There's the evolution of slabs. Round ones, fat ones, short ones, skinny ones, but this is the slab. We use this as much as we do jig fishing. And uh, it's a great way to catch stripers. I know our host Luke just loves to go slabbing. So, if you have any questions, just give us a call. This is Bill Carey with Striper Express with your fishing tip on a sportsman's life. Go catch a fish. A special thanks to these fine sponsors, Vineyard Max Deer Products, and the Anchor Inn and Marina on beautiful Lake Tawakoni, one hour east of Dallas. We had an amazing time visiting Windpoint Park and a special thanks to owner Ryan Fergus for taking his time to show us around the park. If you're looking for a fun getaway on beautiful Lake Tawakoni, please check out windpointparktx.com.
Folks, this segment was brought to us by Gearhead Archery, Smoking Tex Electric Smokers, Snaplock Hunting Blinds, Y.O. Ranch Headquarters, Ultramatic Feeders, and Catfish Pro. Tune in next week for some more real-world outdoor adventures right here on A Sportsman's Life.